Hello, everyone. So, uh, that didn't come out right. My name is Ayo Akinyele, uh, CEO and co-founder at Bolt Labs. And I'm gonna be talking today about what we've been building uh, towards chain agnostic anonymous payment channels. And by chain agnostic, I just mean that we can support uh, UTXO or account-based currencies. So Ethereum, Bitcoin, and similarly forked coins. So this talk really is going to cover uh, these four things. So basically, why do we care about anonymity for payment channels? Uh, what problem are we solving exactly? Uh, how do we build on, uh, how we build uh, anonymous payment channels on top of Zcash and Bitcoin? The differences from how Lightning works today. Uh, talk about some of the use cases that we have in mind uh, that we are able to uni uniquely identify uh, and some performance. So today, the Lightning Network uh, has you know, been deployed probably for the last uh, couple years, since early 2018. It offers a way to do instant settlement, uh, zero counterparty risk, the fees are low, and it's allowed us to scale uh, the Bitcoin uh, blockchain through a series of, of payment channels that are connected uh, pairwise. And it allows Alice and Bob to pay each other without actually having a direct channel. So there are a lot of use cases that uh, payment channels are being um, used with. Uh, so some public statistics. So since the launch on mainnet, it's about 820 uh, Bitcoin that has been committed, uh, about 10,000 nodes, about 35,000 channels. And so uh, this is really just the public information that we know. We know that there are shadow networks uh, where nodes don't actually announce uh, their capacity. And so we do know that, that it's growing in, in ways we can't measure today. So let's talk about how payment channels work today. Uh, so by default, uh, lightning channels are symmetric. The state between the two sides that agree uh, to form this channel are, are visible to both sides. So what that means is that, you know, when Alice and Bob basically deposit one Bitcoin into a multi-sig, uh, they're able to form a relationship uh, that uh, pays uh, out from this, this channel if both of them agree. And so part of forming this channel involves uh, establishing two commitment transactions. Uh, on the left-hand side, Alice has, you know, a commitment transaction that allows her to get her money back. Um, so 0.9 Bitcoin uh, to Alice, 0.1 Bitcoin to Bob. Uh, and this references the, the funding transaction. Similarly, Bob has a similar uh, style of transaction, but the, the imp uh, outputs are, are reversed. And so, as you can see, you know, the, the commitment transactions have you know, identical uh, structures, uh, but they offer you know, both sides a way to close the, the channel if the other side is not cooperative. They exchange signatures. So Alice gets a signature from Bob. Bob gets a signature from Alice. And then at this point, they broadcast this funding transaction on chain. And so now uh, Alice and Bob can uh, essentially send value back and forth for as long as they want. Uh, the fees are low, near zero. Uh, and so it's a, it's a great construct for uh, how to do micropayments uh, today. So of course, uh, once this uh, funding transaction has been confirmed, you know, the, uh, the fact that Bob is a, uh, a hub or can be a hub is a problem because now anyone that Alice pays through Bob will, uh, Bob will know exactly for what and how much. And so this essentially is the problem that we're trying to solve, the fact that both sides have the same view of the channel. And so who you're connected to um, really, really matters. Um, and so if you trust them, well, that's okay. But if you don't, you have no way to take back your control because the protocol doesn't support the ability for one side to uh, hide you know, the, the channel balances. And so because uh, the topology of uh, the Lightning Network is a hub and spoke model where you have, because of the liquidity requirements, you have a lot of hubs that essentially uh, have a lot of connections with a lot of users. And so they're like a honeypot of information. And so they can sell that information to uh, you know, the, the highest bidder. And so as a result, with this kind of structure, you can't really use these kind of channels um, when you don't want to be tracked. Because at some point, 
someone will be willing to pay for the information that the nodes that you're connected to uh, are collecting. So micropayments for ad-free content, you know, tolls, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the hub itself can link you know, the sender and the receiver of a payment. Um, and of course, it can hide your identity from the network if you trust them. And so we're trying to build a solution that doesn't require that you trust the hub. So this is what the Lightning Network looks like today. Like I said earlier, it's a hub and spoke model uh, for the most part, uh, mainly because of the, the centralization of, of capital. Um, you have a lot of uh, big players here uh, that open a lot of connections with a lot of channels, sorry, with a lot of users, and so they're collecting, uh, they're collecting a lot of information and they can sell it. And so the Lightning uh, Network offers some solutions to this. So there's this notion of an atomic multi-pack payment where you take a large uh, payment uh, that you want to route through the network and you cut it up into multiple chunks. Um, you bind it with, a, with the same secret and you route each chunk through a separate intermediary. So this requires that you have multiple channels open. Now, it's, if that is okay in terms of the cost, then that works. Uh, but if you wanted to do this, if you wanted to achieve anonymity for one channel, how do you actually do that? And so our approach has been uh, looking at how to use zero knowledge proofs to essentially uh, bootstrap um, you know, privacy into um, these two party uh, channels. So uh, anonymous payment channels or ZK channels were originally conceived by uh, Ian Myers uh, and Matt Green and uh, in 2016. Uh, it was originally called uh, BOLT, which just stands for Blind Off-Chain Lightweight Transactions. Uh, we rebranded to ZK Channels just to indicate how, uh, what property we're adding to uh, the, the channels. And so it's an extension to the Lightning Protocol, um, and it introduces two uh, main properties. So uh, relationship anonymity, which basically uh, allows the hub to not link a payment to the sender or receiver and uh, value privacy, which allows the hub not to be able to identify uh, the payment amount when it's routing a transaction. So another property of anonymous payment channels is the fact that uh, it's asymmetric. asymmetric. Uh, one side basically maintains the, the, the channel balances, has a complete view of, of what's going on, and is, is basically sending um, zero knowledge proofs to the counterparty uh, to essentially move the state of the channel forward. And so, the view from the uh, customer side is essentially that the payment amounts are hidden from the hub, the sender and the receiver uh, are hidden within the set of open channels, the payments are unlinkable to the channel used. From the hub standpoint, they just know that a user with an open channel is able to uh, pay them uh, some amount of money. If we hide the payment amount, uh, the uh, hub only learns that the fees are paid as a result of routing that transaction. And finally, as a result of all of the open channels that the uh, hub, hub has open, it just learns the aggregate volume of payments. So with our uh, approach, we can actually interoperate with the existing Lightning Network. Um, you could imagine um, at the endpoints, we have you know, zero knowledge hubs that are connected with a lot of, of users, and we can essentially use the existing approach of, of the Lightning Network in terms of onion routing uh, to uh, allow Alice to pay Bob, um, where the first hop and the last hop can't link them, but you know, the amounts might leak to the, to the uh, nodes in the middle, but because of the endpoints, you won't be able to uh, link them together. And so this is a hybrid solution where we have um, ZK channels at the endpoints um, and existing Lightning channels in the middle. So this is something that is possible for us to build. And so at this point, I've given you a sense of the properties that we're trying to achieve with anonymous payment channels. Uh, now I'm gonna basically talk about how we actually build them. Uh, and so we have two, uh, two types of constructions that we can instantiate anonymous payment channels with. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have you know, zero knowledge proofs, uh, Peterson commitments, and uh, blind signatures um, based on CL or Kamenech Lissinskaya. Uh, on the right-hand side, we have authenticated garbling circuits, uh, hash-based commitments, and a two-party computation protocol to produce ECDSA signatures. Um, it's a lot to uh, absorb, but the main point is that on the left-hand side, you know, we, uh, we are essentially building this for Zcash, and on the right-hand side, uh, it's essentially under the umbrella of multi-party computation uh, techniques, and we're uh, hoping to deploy this on Bitcoin. Um, some broad uh, performance numbers. 
So on the left-hand side, the approach with zero knowledge proofs and, and CL blind signatures is really, really fast. Uh, as in, you know, it takes a couple uh, hundred milliseconds you know, to, to, to do a payment and verify it. Uh, but the downside is the fact that you have these blind signatures that you have to validate on chain. And so that creates some uh, challenges for uh, Bitcoin, just because we all know how difficult it is to uh, make any changes there. Uh, and so we've been working with the, the Zcash uh, company, or ECC, uh, to essentially uh, deploy this solution, initial solution. Um, our zero knowledge proof techniques don't actually require a trusted setup. Um, and I guess the MPC techniques, I can say the same, actually. So uh, the, the difference here is that you know, the, the payments are slower because of the MPC uh, that we're computing uh, over the transactions or the, the commitment transactions that are formed. And the nice property, though, is the fact that we're producing ECDSA signatures as a result of the MPC protocol, and so it doesn't require any changes on chain. So we have slow, but no changes, fast, need changes. And so this is the, the, the spectrum of solutions that we're working with. Now, the rest of this talk will really just focus on how we instantiate you know, the left-hand side um, using this generic approach. Uh, so I'll first talk about the generic approach and then dive uh, into how we instantiate you know, both, both uh, uh, approaches. And then we'll take questions. So the high level idea of this generic approach is that you know, Alice represents the customer, uh, Bob represents the hub, and the goal of establishing a channel is really to bootstrap unlinkable payments. If you recall uh, a few slides ago, I mentioned that you know, the hub shouldn't be able to link the fact that uh, Alice and Charlie, uh, Bob being the hub, can't link the fact that Alice is paying Charlie through that hub, if there are other connections that are connected to that hub. And so the goal of the established protocol is really to um, give Alice a way to make unlinkable payments. And so the first step is that we take this commitment transaction that uh, normally would be uh, you know, shared with the counterparty in the clear, we generate a commitment transaction uh, from that um, that is, sorry, we generate a commitment and send that to, to Bob for, uh, for verification uh, to the initial uh, state of the channel. Uh, Bob having this commitment will be able to uh, perform some computation and then produce a uh, closing signature that is a val that completes the commitment transaction uh, for Alice to uh, get her money back. And so uh, I want you to pay attention to the, uh, the fact that I have a question mark and a gray box you know, to, to, to capture that there is some computation that is happening with the inputs and outputs that are coming from both Alice and Bob. And so similarly, we have this payment token um, that allows Alice to make uh, unlinkable payments off chain. Uh, and so the closing signature allows uh, Alice to get her money back, the payment token, uh, sorry, on chain, and then the payment token allows uh, Alice to make payments off chain. And so there's this, this uh, split that we have going on here. Okay, so when Alice has a payment token that bootstraps this, uh, asymm uh, this anonymous payment channel, um, she performs some computation over this payment token, produces a uh, proof that attests to her, um, attests to the fact that she has an open channel with the hub, and she also produces a new commitment to the state of the channel that would allow her to make future payments. And so this new commitment com uh, apostrophe just represents a commitment to the new state of the channel. And so the last component is essentially a old WPK, which stands for uh, a wallet public key, and is really just an identifier for each state of the channel. And so Alice reveals that uh, as part of the initial payment. And I want you to keep in mind that the only thing that hub, the hub actually sees at this point is the fact that some uh, user is essentially attempting to make a payment and has provided a proof to the uh, fact that she's an old, uh, that she has an open channel with the hub. And so with this information, uh, the hub validates it, and essentially, you know, if the proof is valid, uh, Bob produces a, a, closing, a new uh, closing signature on the new commitment transaction uh, that Alice formed privately. So she keeps the, the commitment transaction private, produces a proof and a new commitment for the next version of the channel, and then is able to essentially uh, get her money back. So at this point, above the, the dashed lines, uh, Alice has a way to get her money back from the blockchain. The second phase of the payment is to basically revoke the previous state of the channel. 
and this prevents Alice from ever double, double spending an earlier version where it might provide a, a favorable uh, amount back to her or, uh, or, or to Bob. And so the revo revo revocation sig uh, signature essentially is a way to do that. Um, and so we uh, have Alice sending this, uh, on, uh, the signature on the old wallet public key and uh, Bob performs another set of computation on the, uh, the information that's been provided so far and produces a payment token for Alice to make future payments on the channel. And so now we're gonna basically talk about you know, how we actually do this based on zero knowledge proof techniques versus MPC. But I've laid out the, the generic way to think about this for establishing the channel and then bootstrapping a uh, payment protocol for, uh, that, that is now unlinkable, which means that every time uh, Alice interacts with Bob, the, the payments are unlinkable to her identity. So with the zero knowledge proof techniques, we have a couple of ingredients that I talked about earlier. I'm just gonna uh, define how they, uh, how they work together. So we have commitments, which kind of represent like an encryption on some piece of information, which are you know, balances of the channel, uh, the, the identifier for each state of, uh, of the commitment transactions that are generated. Um, and the content of this commitment cannot be opened by anyone but the sender, and so being Alice. Uh, and then the third property of this is the fact that no one can change uh, you know, this commitment once it's been formed. Uh, the zero knowledge proofs allow us to prove statements uh, about the contents of the commitments, and it gives us soundness in that no one can uh, generate a, a fraudulent proof uh, if they don't have the right credentials. And our approach actually doesn't require any trusted setup because it's based on the hardness of discrete log. So we're not using any snarks in, in, the, in this construction or in any of our constructions. Um, and then finally, we have a, a blind signature protocol that allows uh, Alice to, uh, sorry, so the, the property of the blind signature protocol is literally the fact that you can generate a, a signature uh, on the contents of a commitment without having seen the contents. Um, so the, the signer doesn't learn the contents of what it's signing and it allows uh, one to prove knowledge of a signature um, to attest to the fact that you know, uh, Alice, for example, has an open channel with Bob. So I'm going to skip over the established phase and focus on the payment because I think that's where the, the most differences are between the ZK approach and the MPC approach. Uh, and so the first phase is that we have the, the payment token that we get from interacting with uh, the hub um, to, to get, generate a payment token. Uh, and so we have a zero knowledge, this, this ZK box represents producing a zero knowledge proof that attests to these three things. The fact that um, Alice knows a, a signature on the previous state of the channel. Uh, the, the channel balance for the channel is greater, is sufficient um, for the payment. In this case, we're uh, Alice is sending 0 0.1 ZEC to Bob. And finally, the fact that the uh, updated uh, channel balance is greater than zero. And so these are the three things that the proof uh, represents. And so uh, Alice sends this proof, the commitment, the new commitment to the channel, and reveals the old wallet public key that would allow her to uh, revoke later. Um, and, and so at this point, the, uh, the hub takes this information, validates it, and takes that commitment and, and runs it through this blind signature protocol to produce a new signature on the state of the channel. Uh, that allows Alice to get her money back from the blockchain. So if this proof is valid, Alice is happy. She gets her uh, essentially closing signature. So that's the extent for the ZK proof technique. Uh, the other half of this is the revoking of the previous state that I showed uh, with the generic protocol. And so I'm just focusing on the first phase of how this is different if you're using zero knowledge proofs. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the MPC uh, variant. So for the MPC-based technique, we have uh, two, two main ingredients that are different than uh, for the ZK approach. Uh, garbled circuits, which enables two parties to compute uh, a function, an arbitrary function, uh, over their uh, private inputs. In our case, you know, hashing. Um, and then for, uh, and so this function is represented as a, as a Boolean circuit. And for the second half of it, you know, actual signing for the com commitment transaction, we rely on blind ECDSA signatures. Um, and so we get the same properties with, with blind ECDSA that we get uh, with the CL variant for ZK proofs techniques. 
So how do all of this work together? So Alice, again, generates a commitment transaction um, and produces a, a new commitment, which represents an updated version of the channel, uh, reveals an old wallet public key that identifies the previous state that she's revoking, that she's promising not to uh, double spend. Uh, and then we have the hub you know, processing this information, and then Alice and Bob uh, interact uh, via a garbling circuit protocol um, where the commitment transaction and the pay token zero represent private inputs on the Alice side, and then on, the, uh, on Bob's side, uh, the signing key represents uh, the private input. And so they engage in this uh, garbling circuit protocol, and what comes out is uh, essentially a hash of the commitment transaction that is signed um, using the, the signing key on, from, the, from Bob. And so all of this is done uh, in NPC, and what comes out is uh, a new signature that can be uh, ver verified on chain without any changes. And so the, the, the uh, downside of, uh, of this approach um, is the fact that, you know, because we are not making any changes on chain, you know, the initial balances of the channel are leaked to the network and also the closing uh, uh, balances, but everything that happens off chain and routed through an intermediary uh, that is uh, that has implemented this protocol cannot lead to uh, you know Alice being identified or being tied to, to those payments, and so it provides her uh, essentially like a mixing uh, type of anonymity on the network. Um, and so this is the the high level uh, without getting. Uh, too further down into these gray boxes. Um, and since I only have a short time left, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the performance numbers. Uh, so for the ZK proofs, we have uh, concrete uh, timings. Uh, so it takes about uh, 160 uh, milliseconds for uh, a payment. And we base this implementation around the BLS12381 curve. This is from uh, the Zcash uh, uh, tech stack. Um, and verifying a payment proof takes about 250 milliseconds. So in terms of our progress, we have a new paper that describes both approaches. The original approach focused on the ZK proofs uh, that's already been published, uh, but the, the, the second variant uh, basically captures both and how we, we can switch between the two based on the currency that we're integrating with. Um, these, uh, our single hop solution is essentially tied to uh, the ZK proof uh, implementation right now, but we're, we're building the same uh, solution for the MPC approach um, as we speak. And so these uh, repositories, the first one is live, the second one will be live soon, and we've been working with the ECC, at least for the ZK proofs uh, technique, uh, a testnet that supports um, that implementation. And so we hope to engage the community in terms of uh, pushing the boundary on uh, what is possible with anonymous payment channels. Finally, I want to leave you with this. So anonymous payment channels are definitely a, a new construct uh, from the standpoint of like the Lightning Network exists, it's being used on a day-to-day -day basis. People are building uh, a lot of software on it. And our focus has been underneath the hood. We haven't needed to change anything at the surface, mainly because we're working at the protocol level. Now, for the use cases that we have in mind, we think that you know, pay-as-you-go type services where you don't want to be tracked. Imagine being able to uh, spin up a channel um, locally um, and, and establish a, a connection with a cloud service and get access to uh, compute um, without having to sign up or provide your, uh, any identifying information. And so these are kind of the demos we think we'll be able to um, provide uh, for developers to push uh, the, the boundary in terms of what we can do with, with these kinds of channels. Uh, what is also, what, what other things that we can we do? Uh, so private cross-chain value transfers are possible, um, where you have a series of nodes that you're uh, routing or you're, you're, you're moving value through that can't identify you. And you can hide within the anonymity set of all of the open channels that um, those uh, intermediate nodes have open. And finally, we think this is an approach for uh, onboarding users to, to crypto where they don't want to be tracked. And, um, it, and obviously, this, this uh, flies in the face of some regulation, uh, but we think you know, there is a balance between having a way to establish a channel and you provide uh, some identifying information and you get an authenticator that you can then switch to uh, a private mode where anything you do with that channel is unlinkable to your identity. And so this is the kind of balance we can achieve with anonymous payment channels. And I think based on the techniques we've been exploring, we think these are efficient enough for real-world usage. Um, we've been focusing on, on the business-to-business -business use cases for now, but
but we think there's a bigger opportunity uh, for uh, consumers and developers alike. And we want to in operate, be interoperable with the li existing Lightning Network. And you know, part of our journey is um, you know, making this open source and you know, engaging you know, the community in terms of what can be built on top. So I hope you'll join us and uh, look forward for your feedback.